Dory Funk, you know, got me. Dory Funk was in Charlotte booking at that time. He got me in Japan. He wanted me to go to Puerto Rico, and I turned that down. For I Carlos or? For, yeah, for, okay. at that time, you know, I'd heard horror stories about it over there. <clears throat> so I went to Japan and for a five-week tour, and I just totally hated it. I'll just be honest. I, I didn't know the style. I was totally lost. Nobody informed me of, you know, anything, like what to do. All I kept hearing was just, whatever you do, don't sell, don't sell, you know. And that's, now I understand, you know, that was stupid. At that, you know, then I was basically a suplex dummy every night. All they want to do, because I'm the biggest guy, they want to suplex me every huh. night. You know, back suplexes and this and that, you know. I'm trying to I'm trying to oblige them, but, man, they're killing me. And then they team me up with Bruiser Brody, you know, and I, I don't know anything. I'm totally lost, you know. And, uh, Brody, you know, Brody just tells me, you know, just follow me, kid. You know, dude, just follow me. I'm like, whatever. And I'm like. People don't know, but I got bad vision. He's a prescription. I got I wear glasses. I got bad vision, so I we the his music thing starts or whatever, and uh, we head out to the ring, you know. And I'm like, and I, I don't even know how he huh. where he goes. I'm like I'm looking to the ring because all the lights are on, as you know. And I'm just trying to find my way to the ring half the nights. People don't know that, yeah. but it's wow. the truth. That's why I started wearing. You know, I started as a one man gang. I put on glasses I can see, you know, until I take them off. But anyway, I got in the middle of the ring, you know, just waiting around, looking. I don't, there's no Bruiser Brody. That was when he was going through the crowds? Yeah, but I look up in the stands, and he's way at the top of these bleachers, you know, with his chain, you know, yeah, knocking people, kicking them, and they're taking, rolling down the steps and stuff. I'm like, holy cow, what have I got into? <laughs> it was crazy. <laughs> and, man, he he was a machine. People, you know, people now probably can see him on video from Japan. But yeah, he was a machine. Uh, c compared to the way you see him in the States, Russell. Right. He, he didn't have that – in the States, you know, he didn't have that same uh, same ability to be wide open. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. His character. Over there, man, he, he was drop-kicking him and, I mean, leapfrogging him. And, I mean, he was earning big money for it. Now, don't get me wrong. But, I mean, he was a machine. He could go like you wouldn't believe. What was he like outside the ring, Brody? Brody was a really nice guy. To me, he was a really nice guy. I mean, family guy. He come into Charlotte. I, you know, I, he'd ride with me in Charlotte because I'd pick him up. I'd take care of him, basically. You know what I mean? Right. I wouldn't charge him trans or nothing. But and then, uh, not and then at that particular time, I didn't even realize. Years later, you know, we'd work a program. You know, but then I met him before that. He didn't. Uh, he didn't remember. But years before that, my first real time, big time wrestling match from Independence, I, I got a call from Ole Anderson. They want. I don't know how they got my number or anything, but. They want me to come to the Omni for an Omni show. I'm like, man, you got to be kidding me, you know? All right. So it's before anything. It's before ICW or anything. I went to the Omni, ended up, uh, they put me under a mask as some blue Avenger and put me against Bruiser Brody. Wow. Yeah. And Bruiser Brody just cleaned my clock, basically. Right. It was just, a, I'm just a dummy for him, you know. I, I'm out there, he's stomping me and doing this and but that. But he took care of you, though, right? Oh, yeah. Huh. He I mean, he took care of me. It was about a seven-minute match. Ended up with the big boot and the big high knee drop, you know, for the pin, of course, you know. Huh. We went outside the ring. He pounded me with chairs, basically, the whole Bruiser Brody style because they was bringing him into Atlanta, you know, and that's – Building they, him up. They want to build him up. But years later, you know, who would think years later?